Welcome to Easy Anatomy. Um, I'm talking to you in, uh, today about uh, the anatomy of the neck fascia. Uh, then I will cover uh, neck spaces, the facial spaces, and uh, spread of dental infection. Um, uh, neck fascia, uh, if you remember, we have superficial fascia, superficial fascia, then deep fascia the superficial fascia actually which extend from the neck to the face including or contain inside it the muscles which are located within the superficial fascia is going to be platysma in the neck and facial muscles and this take us back to the facial muscle when we said that facial muscles are subcutaneous, subcutaneous muscles. Okay. So this is a superficial fascia. Superficial fascia contains cutaneous nerves and superficial vessels. When I say cutaneous nerves, what are cutaneous nerves come to your mind? Cutaneous nerves come to your mind. Those are cutaneous nerves which are branches from cervical plexus, okay, like transverse cervical, supraclavicular, uh, lesser occipital, great auricular. So cutaneous nerves of the neck, and then inside the face you have several cutaneous nerves which are terminal branches from trigeminal, okay. So cutaneous nerves in the head gonna be branches of trigeminal nerve and in the neck those are branches of cervical plexus superficial vessels which are located within the superficial fascia I will start with two jugular veins the anterior jugular vein in the neck external jugular vein in the neck okay then in the head blood vessels of face and the scalp those are subcutaneous okay so keep in mind that so superficial fascia contain muscles contain vessels contain nerves the muscle platysma and facial muscles vessels and uh, nerves, nerves, cutaneous nerves, which are terminal branches of trigeminal in the head, terminal branches from cervical plexus, like lesser occipital, transverse cervical, great auricular, etc. Superficial vessels, uh, anterior and external jugular veins, head uh, inside the head and the face, you will see blood vessels of the face, of the face and the scalp. How about deep fascia? Deep fascia. Keep in mind that they are a deep fascia has three layers. The investing layer, this is the superficial layer. Then the second layer or middle layer pretracheal. Then the third layer, which is pre-vertebral. Pre-vertebral. So you have three layers from the deep fascia: investing, pretracheal, and pre-vertebral. Okay, now let us imagine the location and the arrangement of this deep fascia. If we take cross section in the neck, this cross section starting from here is the vertebra, body of the vertebra, vertebral arch, which extends posterior until the spine, you have the spine, then here is the transverse process, transverse process, and this is the vertebral foramen, so this is the body of the vertebra, okay, then anterior in the neck, you will have the gland, glandular layer, this is thyroid gland, okay, thyroid gland,
then behind the thyroid you have trachea or pharynx uh, sorry or larynx above then esophagus or pharynx above okay depend on the level of the neck so this is trachea and this is esophagus and this is thyroid okay, okay. so if you look at the cross section of the muscles in the neck you will see anterior to the vertebral column and the lateral in the neck whether in the anterior and the lateral in the neck you will have what we call them prevertebral muscles and the lateral scalene muscles so you have some muscles around the vertebra in the floor of the posterior triangle or longus coli muscle which is located behind the carotid sheath so this is on each side you have some muscles again on the side of the neck and the muscles in the front of the neck okay then the fascia or deep fascia has investing and the middle layer superficial layer investing we call it investing the middle we call it pretracheal then you have the posterior or the deepest layer is called prevertebral uh, before i go to the fascia on the side you have two main muscles which forming the boundary of the posterior triangle those muscles are trapezius and sternocleidomastoid trapezius and sternocleidomastoid correct then anterior here to the thyroid gland you have infrahyoid muscles infrahyoid muscles correct so you have infrahyoid muscles so again i want i would like from you to imagine the cross section here is the vertebra, transverse process, spine, vertebral foramen, prevertebral muscles and scalene muscles. This is a sternocleidomastoid muscle, sorry, trapezius muscle. There is trapezius. Then this is a sternocleidomastoid muscle. Those are infrahyoid muscles. Infrahyoid muscles, which are anterior to the thyroid. Okay, let us go to the fascia now. We start with the investing layer. Investing layer extend as you see from the spine. Okay, then investing trapezius and across the roof of the posterior triangle until it hit sternocleidomastoid, investing sternocleidomastoid. Okay, and the contain to the front of the neck. This is the investing layer. So investing layer, we call it investing because in the neck it invests two muscles, the sternocleidomastoid, trapezius, and the sternocleidomastoid. Okay. Keep in mind that this fascia, when it come up to the head, it meet or get in touch with the lower border of the mandible is split into two layers, and I will explain that. It's split into two layers. Okay. So here is the mandible. So I'm talking here about the neck, but let us say it come to the mandible. Here is the mandible. Okay. And here is lateral and here is medial. So once it comes, the investing layer come to the lower border of the mandible, which muscle located on the lateral side of the mandible? This is what? masseter okay and which muscle coming here and attach it to the angle of the mandible from inside medial medial trigoid this is medial trigoid correct so investing layer when it comes to the lower border of the mandible is split into two layer when covering the masseter and one extend to the deep surface of medial pterygoid deep surface of medial pterygoid and is going to create space anatomical space we call, we call it masticatory space which has this masseteric outside and the trigo mandibular from inside so this is again investing layer 
investing layer before coming here is going to invest which gland this gland here and this gland extend from inside this is gonna be sub mandibular gland sub mandibular gland and from outside which gland this fascia extend and enclosing it if we extend up here is going to be what hmm. superficial to masseter it gonna be parotid gland parotid gland so if I ask you here is the investing layer in the neck investing what investing this muscle and that muscle sternocleidomastoid and trapezius in the head investing what investing two glands which glands the submandibular and parotid gland submandibular and parotid gland okay and then covering the masseter and the under surface of medial trigoid so this is an investing layer let us go to the another layer which is the pretracheal layer the pretracheal layer this is the pretracheal layer surrounding the thyroid gland and also there is a layer extending to enclose and covering the muscle which is infrahyoid muscles and here is the thyroid gland and surrounding these tubes trachea esophagus or pharynx and larynx so basically we call it pretracheal because it's going and surround also the trachea and surrounding the esophagus and from behind here okay continue behind with what buccopharyngeal fascia buccopharyngeal fascia behind the pharynx in the upper part of the neck so the pretracheal fascia has visceral part this visceral portion which related to the neck viscera this is the visceral portion the visceral portion which related to trachea thyroid and esophagus or larynx and pharynx so this is the visceral portion the muscular portion which related to the infrahyoid muscle so this is the infrahyoid muscle and this is the viscera of the neck so this is the pretracheal together together we call them pretracheal fascia pretracheal fascia okay the pretracheal fascia I like to zoom here and if you remember here is the thyroid gland thyroid gland okay and the upper end of the lobe extend to the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage uh, here is thyroid cartilage if you remember this is the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage which connect to the thyroid, sternothyroid and the pretracheal fascia so the fascia and here is this is pyramidal loop from the thyroid gland and here is hyoid bone hyoid bone thyroid cartilage and this is thyroid gland keep in mind the fascia extend here this fascia extending here to the oblique line to the oblique line okay and continue down to the mediastinum which is the central portion central portion of the thoracic cavity and continue with pericardium down to the pericardium so connect again thyroid gland surrounding thyroid gland and trachea and extend to the oblique line of thyroid cartilage oblique line of thyroid cartilage that's why 
During swallowing, thyroid gland also move up and down. Why it move up and down? As you see, because of the attachment of this fascia to the thyroid cartilage. And you know thyroid cartilage as part of the larynx move up and down during swallowing. Of course, there is another factor. If you remember pyramidal loop connect to the hyoid bone, also with this band, this band which you call it levator glandular thyroid. And as you know, this is a remnant of the thyroglossal duct. Remnant of the thyroglossal duct. So this explains why thyroid gland move up and down during swallowing because of attachment to the hyoid bone through this levator gland of thyroid and the attachment of the pretracheal fascia to the thyroid cartilage. Okay? And also this explains why if there is any tumor in the thyroid gland or there is a swelling of thyroid gland it can expand down but not up it can go to down to mediastinum why again because expansion up is going to be limited by this attachment in addition to the attachment of sternothyroid muscle remember sternothyroid muscle connected here so imagine that this pen is a sternothyroid muscle connected to this line so if there is a swelling here is not going to go up it's going to be limited by this attachment attachment of the muscle, attachment of the fascia, but it can freely expand it down to the mediastinum. Okay, so keep in mind this fact. So we talked now about the middle layer. So the middle layer, which is pretracheal fascia, has visceral portion and has muscular portion related to infrared muscle. The deepest layer, deepest layer, which is prevertebral fascia, is going to have two layers actually, two layers. So the prevertebral fascia has alar layer. This is the alar layer. Then the prevertebral layer. Then we have prevertebral layer. Prevertebral layer, okay? Which extend again anterior to the muscles in the floor of the posterior triangle and the anterior to the longus coli muscles in the front of the neck. So this is the prevertebral layer. This, the yellow one, is the alar layer. layer. And this thickening here is buccopharyngeal fascia. Okay? So those are layers of deep fascia. Keep in mind that on each side here, what what is the name of the fascia here surrounding uh, internal jugular vein and carotid arteries is going to be carotid sheath. It will be carotid sheath. So carotid sheath is going to be on each side here and connected to all three layers of the deep fascia. All three layers of the deep fascia. Connected medially to the pretracheal, laterally to the investing and the deep here to the prevertebral. This is a carotid sheath. This one is going to be carotid sheath. Okay? If you look carefully here, you will see that this fascia create spaces. And I will just remind you with these spaces, the space here between the vertebra and the prevertebral layer, we call it prevertebral space. The space between alar and prevertebral layer is called the dangerous space. This one here, dangerous. This one is vertebral, okay? Then the space behind the buccopharyngeal fascia between it and the alar is called retropharyngeal space. So again, prevertebral here behind the prevertebral layer, dangerous in this area, and retropharyngeal here. On each side is going to be parapharyngeal. On each side is going to be parapharyngeal around the pharynx. So again, parapharyngeal. Retropharyngeal, dangerous, and prevertebral space. Then you have carotid sheath on each side. I wish this uh, help you just to imagine and get an idea about the arrangement of neck fascia. Okay, thank you.